Hi, it's Nicole McGuirk with this week's From Start to Finish video brought to you by TwoPeasInABucket.com. This week I have a layout showcasing a stamped embellishment colored in with Copics. For this week's, this week's layout, I've got three photos here, two that are three by four inches and one that is four by six. And I'm just gonna probably trim around these and leave a little bit of a white border. And then the papers that I've chosen to use this week, most of them are from the Pebbles Happy Go Lucky collection. And I might mix and match a few other things here and there. But for the most part, I think I'll probably be sticking to this one collection. I'm gonna be using this it's a light blue paper with a little white flower with a little red polka dot in the middle. I don't know if you can see that very good there. I'm going to be using that paper. And then for, I guess I'll say that one for just a second so I can talk about it a little bit more. But then my, for my next paper, I have this really cute green with white polka dot. Then this pink that has like a leaf border design in it. It's very subtle, tone on tone. None of these have like a really big pattern or anything in them. A nice red with white plaid. And then this is almost a solid. It's blue and it has a little white flower. I don't think you can even see it. It's barely noticeable design on it. I picked it because I wanted sort of a solid, I thought so. We'll see if that one works here as I get going. But then I picked up this border leaf pattern paper because it picks up so many of the colors from these. So I thought we could do something with that. So these are the papers that I'm going to attempt to use. Also, one of the basic gray 6x6 paper pads, this is the one with that's more white ledger. I'm going to probably incorporate some of that into this design for my stamping or my journaling. Then I have a couple of the My Mind's Eye Lime Twist 6x6 paper pads. And some of the colors in these I thought would coordinate nicely back to the Pebbles Happy Go Lucky collection, like this orange. This is um, kind of a distressed, grungy orange polka dot a little hard to see there, but it picks up the orange from the leaves. Or um, I was also thinking, here's another orange, a bigger polka dot design. So a couple in that one, plus there's like a little bit of green in here that's nice. This red polka dot, also nice. So if I need some accents, oh this green is a good one, it coordinates nicely back to this. If I'm wanting some just accent pieces, red flower. I thought these would be nice to just pick up here and there. This is a nice brown wood grain. Even if I wanted to do something out of this, this would be a nice touch, I thought, too. So a few six by six paper pads. They, I use them a lot for card making, but they don't have to be just for that. They're great for die cutting or um, just adding little pieces here and there. And then also from the My Mind's Eye Lime Twist, I have a couple of their sticker sheets that I thought I might incorporate. A couple of the pieces from here, I think the colors coordinate really nicely with the Happy Go Lucky. And for my title, I have this die cut from My Mind's Eye. Cute little banner, so I thought that would be fun. And then I am going to be using some stamps this week. I have got, this is the Large Posy Hero Arts stamp, and I'm going to be coloring it in with some Copic markers to coordinate back with my page. But I thought it might even be cute, like to stamp this and color it in and punch it out with a circle punch. And you could have the the banner kind of tucked underneath, and it just it makes for a really nice title presentation. And then I am going to incorporate a little bit of stamping. This set from Technique Tuesday by Allie Edwards is the, this is called, let me see where it says what the title is, Love Always Wins, and of course it's all love themed 
stamps and I thought some of these would be fun and they coordinate really nicely back with the My Mind's Eye title that I'm using. So I could stamp a border or even stamp a vertical border or all kinds of things with, with these. And then um, I was going to use these but then I changed my mind on the photos that I was going to use so I'm not sure if I still will but even though these are for tw um, 2011 I could still use bits and pieces of these and custom stamp my own date since the pictures I'm using are from a few years ago so I might still do that so I'm going to leave those in here for now. Anyway this is what I have so far so let's get started putting the layout together. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is trim my photos and I'm just leaving a narrow white border around all of them. It's a pre-made mat that way. And I'm going to cut a few strips of paper from the Happy Go Lucky collection here. Just trying to figure out exactly what I want. And you can see some of these are pieces are scraps of paper. So I just kind of have to trim them up a little bit. I'm going to lay things out as I'm going to make sure I like how it looks. So I've got a couple of borders there along the bottom. And then I'm going to tuck my photos underneath that in a strip. I've got some paper there at the top. And then I'm thinking I'll put my banner at the top with my stamped flower. Again, just trimming up some more borders from the paper. This way you can use lots of different papers and things like that that coordinate by using small strips. I'm going to cut two of those pink borders. I like one at the top and one at the bottom. I thought I might use a little narrow strip there, but I ended up not using that. did something different instead. I stamped a border. I'm going to punch a border with this double embossed uh, punch. And the embossing is a little bit misleading. If you punch it fairly firmly, then you will get that little embossed ridge there on the scallop. But if you kind of punch it gently, then you won't have that embossed edge if you don't like that. And it's just this really nice big scallop. This is one of my very favorite punches. I really like it. Still fiddling around there with my paper strips, trying to figure out what I like the best. And I cut a thin blue strip there because I wanted to incorporate a little blue at the top of the page. Now I'm taking this stamp from Allie Edwards and it says, love you, love you, love you. And I lay, you lay, I usually like to lay it out on my surface first and then pick it up with my clear block. That way, especially with longer strips like this, it will be much straighter. And I apologize, I kept getting my head in the way of the video camera because I wanted to make sure I got this lined up perfectly. Now I was gonna stamp it all in one color and because there's three words together there, and then I thought, no, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp it in several colors and see what it looks like. And I ended up really liking how this turned out. I thought it was kind of fun. It looked more like something that I may have cut from a piece of pattern paper once I got it stamped all the way across. I'm using the Ginny Bolin inks again for this. I'm using cough syrup and chewing gum, soap powder, and the name of the green escapes me at the minute at the moment. I'm sorry, um, but the green is just going to be at the very ends there. And I did start in the middle, much like last week's video. And this is how I do it whenever I'm stamping a border. I start in the middle and work my way out. That way it gives you a much more even stamped design. And then I'll just cut this in a thin strip. This is some smooth cardstock that I stamped on. I find I like the results much better than when I stamp on something that has a texture. So I usually use a, a smooth cardstock. Now I'm going to stamp my flower here from Hero Arts, and I am using a different kind of smooth cardstock for this. I had used kind of some cheaper stuff, I guess, for my border. But for when you're want to, when you're coloring with Copics, you want to be sure that you're using a a cardstock that is appropriate for Copic coloring. There's certain ones that are better. 
I stamped my flower and then I think I missed it, my video camera battery died. I stamped that Hero Arts Ledger stamp with the soap powder, Ginny Bolin ink, over top of it. It gives it a more realistic effect, I think, this way, because I'm going to be cutting it out in a circle shape. And I am speeding through my Copic coloring. This was probably the most time intensive part of my layout, just because this flower has so much detail, but it really looks incredible once you have it all colored in and you have that shading and the depth and dimension. So I chose some colors that kind of coordinate and look good with the reds in my layout. I originally was gonna go with pink and I even colored a whole flower in pinks and I just didn't like it. It just didn't coordinate with the really light pink that I used on my layout. It would have probably been fine for something else. In fact, I kept that flower and I'll probably put it on a card or something. But I was much, much happier with the reds. Just going back in with the darks. With Copics, you can go over them as many times as you want to until you get the coloring just the way you like it. Now I'm using a Colezzel, which is just this old circle cutter that I have, and maybe some of you have it as well, to cut some large circles. I could have used my Silhouette as, to do this as well. This was just, I have this out and I still use it all the time. So I cut my stamped flower in a circle and then cut a couple of extra ones from pattern paper. So you can see my pages coming together, plus I laid out some of those doodle bug buttons. I did another layout that's in my gallery where I did kind of the same thing with these papers, or with that, that border there at the bottom where I added the doodle bug buttons. And I really like that effect, so I did it on this page too. I see no problem in repeating things that you like. <laughs> because many times your layout, you're probably not scrapping in order, so the layouts or yeah, the layouts won't be right next to each other and nobody will ever know. And if it's something you really like, I say repeat it. Just gonna tuck those photos underneath that border. Now that I have a lot of the components trimmed and stamped, I'm gonna go ahead and put the page pretty much together and then I can add my embellishments. So there are some borders at the bottom. Fix that photo. And then you can see where anything was overhanging there. I'm just going to trim that off. I'm going to tuck in my title. And now I'm going to take the Allie Edwards stamps. This is from a, the date stamp that I was talking about earlier. And even though this set is for 2011, I am going to go ahead and use it because it has the numbers and the dates, the days of the week. I really think this is a very versatile set. And I love the, the text or the font for the months and the days of the week. It's very similar to what I use in my journaling, so I, I'm very drawn to it. So I just trimmed that date sticker, and I'm trying to figure out where to put it, and I decided to tuck it up here at the top. Next, I did sew on my buttons. I didn't think I would bore you with all of that, and I added another sticker at the top, and I printed my journaling on that basic gray ledger paper and I, I had cut the, or punched the top first to get that notebook edge, then ran it through my printer. And I'm just adding a stamped word to my journaling with the same Ali Edwards stamp set that I used before for the stamped border. I like adding stamped words into my journaling. I think it adds a really fun touch to the page. And I thought I, in fact, I went ahead and stamped it and then I realized I didn't like it. So you'll see here in a little bit how I covered up that kind of mistake. I thought I would stamp a little period at the end of my journaling there when I stamped that word, but I used red ink, and I wish I would have gone with something a little more subdued, like the blue or the green. But as it is, I, I'll fix it here in a little bit. I'm just gonna tuck my journaling bin underneath my largest photo. Because there's not a lot of it, I'm able to do that for this particular page. And then I'm just kind of crinkling up that punched edge so that it looks like um, I actually tore it from a notebook. So the page is almost finished. 
I do need to add just a couple more things. And I'm going to take, I am going to stamp one additional thing. There was one more cute little phrase from the love set here that I'm going to stamp on an October afternoon label sticker. It fits perfectly in one of those little circles. And then I thought the bottom of the page was um, a little boring, so I put that at the bottom. Okay, here's where I fixed my mistake. I went ahead and put a brad in and covered up that stamped mistake. And I ended up liking it better because I kind of needed some embellishment over there, I thought, since the bottom border has those buttons and, and everything, so it ended up being okay. So that's a way you can get away with it. If you do make a mistake, you can kind of cover it up. And that is it. For more information on this page, please visit twopeaceinabucket.com on May 18th, 2011. Thanks for watching another From Start to Finish video. See you next week.